Hello and welcome once again to Harry's Jetty Clinic. In this episode I thought we'd take a look at some of the uh, further options that are available in the logical switches menus. A, I'll assume a certain level of knowledge uh, in this video. If you're comfortable with the logical operators like AND and OR, fine, carry on. If you're not, then could I suggest you take a look at my series uh, entitled the logical switches for beginners so that you can understand some of the things that are going on more easily, just be more fluent with them. Uh, the stuff we're looking at is not so much logical as just numerical operators, but Jetty's put it all in the logical switches stuff and it's more like trigger points. So we'll just call it logical switching anyway. So let's take a look into advanced properties, logical switches. We'll go into L1 and we'll just stick here and look at what goes on. I'm going to come down and control two. I'm simply going to assign a switch for this. That'll do. Come down here, give it the AND condition so that we can see the result of the outputs. Okay, now control one. I'm going to choose uh, P8, the rotary knob. There we are. And in previous episodes in the beginner series, we saw how we can choose uh, this for our switching points. I don't want this screen. I, I specifically want this screen, the proportional one, but without the switch value setting on it. We keep going around. I don't want that one. Don't want that one. I want this one. Say OK, because over here now, suddenly, we've got a couple of new things have appeared. And what do these let us do? Well, if we move on from P8, uh, for some reason it defaults to X is greater than, which is the second one in the list. So if we scroll backwards, we start with X is less than. And of course, uh, if it defaults to 0%, which is uh, the control at its midpoint. So if I turn the tuning knob down, it would go below 0, middle is 0, above it is 0. So now, if I switch control 2 on, so the AND switch will react if we go below 0. There it goes, it goes on, because the control has gone below 0. If I turn the control up above the midpoint, it goes off. Of course then, if I select X greater than 0, it's the other way around. With the control knob up, it's switched on. Control knob down, the AND switch has gone off. Okie doke. This one's a very interesting one because it gives us a linear output as long as the AND condition has been satisfied with control B, the switch. So as long as control B is on, look, the output goes with the knob that I'm turning. So from plus 100 down through 0 down to minus 100. What happens if we lose the AND condition by switching control 2 off? Well, it locks hard into minus 100%. So I shall now rotate P8. And the output's locked at minus 100. That's interesting. What would happen if... Oh, take it again into linear. If we changed it to the OR condition. Well, as long as something's switched on... Uh, even though control 2 is off, control 1 is effectively switched on, the system works. Yeah? But now, if I switch on control 2, it locks it at plus 100. So, you can use the same switch, same rotary knob, uh, but by operating the switch, you can force it to lock at minus 100, or plus 100, depending on whether you choose the AND, or the OR switch. Okay, let's take that back to AND. And we'll come back up. Now, this can be assigned uh, as an actual control for a function. Let's take a little look at that. Whilst we're doing that, I will also go into Sounds of Proportional Controls, select Control P8, say OK, move to the mode, center, beep. So now 
at least if I put the, the knob to the middle, there we go, little beep as we get there, we know we're there. And I've already set up a control function F. There it is, assigned to logic switch one. And the servo has been assigned to F. So now if we look at channel five is control function F, servo five, but it's been assigned to logic switch one as its output. Now, because this switch is on, we're in the AND condition. See, channel five works with the rotary knob. But if I switch the switch, bang, it's locked at minus 100. In that sense, it behaves like the throttle cut function. Now, of course, if I changed logic switch one to the OR, as we've seen, then operating the switch would lock it at plus 100. So now we have the option to lock a control off at plus 100 or minus 100, or you can lock it at zero, and there are two ways to do that. Uh, you may have seen in some of my other videos uh, how I can uh, use mixing of something back to itself at minus 100%, for example, to switch a gyro's gain back to zero if you needed to switch it off in a hurry. Well, here's another way of doing it. To switch back to 0%, we can go into fine tuning, function curves, function F, change it from standard to a three point, come down here and take that point up to zero. I'll switch the function back on. So there, now the target has appeared. That's where the control knob is. But you can see that once it gets down to zero, it sticks at that. Maybe not so great for the control knob. Um, but what you could do is wind that up to say 50. And now let's have a look at what happens to the five. You can wind it from zero, uh, so zero up to 100% and lock it out at zero. Okie doke. Let's go back into here and set it back to the standard curve for the moment. Go into it back to logical switches and we'll look at what's further on beyond linear. Right, this is an interesting one. There's a sort of vertical line, an X, a vertical line, and less than. What they're trying to indicate here is that with this percentage, if X is in between whatever percentage here is on a plus and minus value, then it will switch on. And with the next switch on, if X is outside those percentages. So let's have a look at an example of it. I'll say 10%. Well, I know it'll give us a bit more latitude in the movement. Go for 30%. Now, this 30 applies plus and minus. So if the X, meaning the position of the knob, is in between plus or minus 30%, it will switch on. If it goes outside plus or minus 30%, it'll switch off. So you can see the position of the knob is fairly close to zero. I'll move it down. The AND switch is on. This is on because the knob, X, is in between plus or minus 30. Once I get outside minus 30, see, it switches off. Or if I go outside plus 30, it switches off. And the other way around, X is greater than 30. So it'll switch on when I get beyond plus 30. There we go. And it'll switch on when I get beyond minus 30. There we go. Now, uh, where might you apply this? Well, uh, you may have seen my video about creating an automatic rate switch for flicks and spins, in which, in effect, we, we do this with the elevator stick and the rudder stick. And we were using one of the other uh, proportional controls relying on the 
switch points being set in the stick switches setups menu, which is in, um, I think it's the base, uh, the fine, no, it's in advanced properties, but you have to then go to another menu to set it. We well, could set it in here. Choose the elevator stick, choose X is outside and put something like 90% there. Do the same with the other. And this, you could build all of that functionality within the one logic screen without having to go to your stick switches setups, uh, unless you're happy to accept the sort of 75% that they choose. But if you needed the values that are in the stick switches setup menu to switch something else, then happily you can come here and choose your own values in the logic switch. What else have we got in here? X equals 30%. So if I turn the knob up to 30%, then the switch will come on. But did you notice it didn't? Because it's incredibly precise. X equals 30% is X equals 30 point not, 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 not percent recurring forever. And the chance of you getting the control to that are very, very slim. So let's have a look. We've set X is equal to zero, which is stick at middle, which is the center beep. Will this ever switch on? Oh, did you see it flash there? Just the on point. There it is. I'm having to hold the knob between the detents in it. So yeah, you, there's one click. There's neutral. There's another click. So it's very hard to get it exactly precise. So perhaps not a great deal of use. The next one on in the menu is a lot more use. It's X is around about the value. So around about zero. Can you see now it's easily switched on? I'll come one click off neutral. There's the center beep and it's switched on. I'll go one click away from neutral and it's off. So if you're looking to go for a particular value, you're probably better off with the X is near to because it operates with a very small percentage either way. How are we doing? 12 minutes. Uh, I've got a couple more items to show you and I think we'll just stick with it rather than make another video about it. So we'll go back here to X is linear. Lovely. We'll leave it switched on and we'll come down and look at what what's going on here. All right, we move along here. We've got these symbols. There's a sort of forward slash, a time, backward slash, and a time. Uh, if you move to the, the slash and you press the programming button, it changes to a vertical line. But it's also a bit more obvious what's going on. Can you see there's a sort of little horizontal, a vertical, and a little horizontal? If I press it again, that, that little horizontal at the top and bottom is there, but it's harder to see. Well, this is the slope of the switching on if you apply a time. And that's the slope of the switching off if you apply a time. So uh, what we're going to do is, uh, and you can apply this with two switches. They don't have to be a, a proportional control in a switch. It can be to two switches. So what I'll do is leave this one as a, a slope and we'll go here and apply a time, a big time, just to show it 10 seconds. Whereas this one, this is the off switch or going in reverse, and we'll make that a vertical so that it doesn't move over time, it just bangs. But what does the timer do then? Well, the timer now applies a delay to getting there. So we'll set that to say three seconds so that we can see what's happening. So now, if I was to switch the control off, it's an AND, so remember it will go back to minus 100. It looks here and sees, aha, he doesn't want it to go there over a period of time. He wants it just to go there. It's an instant switch, but not for three seconds. So if I switch it off, Three seconds will elapse and bang, it'll go to minus 100. There you go. But if I switch it on, it looks at what have we done here. Ah, he wants it to move over that period of time. 
So it will now move back to where it was, because I haven't moved the tuning knob, but it will take 10 seconds to do so. Now, will it take 10 seconds to move to where I've put the knob? Probably not. It probably means 10 seconds from minus 100 to plus 100. But let's give it a go and watch the values now. There they go, moving nice and smoothly over a period of time. And if I switch it off, there'll be a three second pause and it'll just snap back to nil. Okay, and that actually then applies to the servo. So here's servo five. I haven't moved in all, but it's still at that sort of, what was it, plus 3%, plus 5%. So I'll switch on. And you can see over time the servo moving smoothly to that point. Six percent it says there. And if I switch off, count to three, and then it'll snap back to the minus 100. One, two, three. Bingo. There we go. Okay, so that's a, a little look at all the further options in the logic switches and the sort of power that it does give you. I would suggest that if you're thinking of logic switches to move um, flight modes, that you, you stick to using the time delay in the flight modes rather than the logic switch, uh, because the flight mode won't move smoothly. I wouldn't have thought it'll still just look for a, an on-off point and snap anyway. Uh, so use these uh, timers, etc., rather to move functions, and then you can, with your function curve, do all sorts of things there. Okie dokie, have fun with that.